We're good? You're going to record it. Just, okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi alladhi khalaqa al-samawati wal-arda wa ja'ala al-dhulumati wal-nur thumma al-ladhina kafaru bi rabbihim ya'dilun. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Bashara wa anthar. لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم إنا نعوذ بك أن نضل أو نضل أو نزل أو نزل أو نظلم أو نظلم أو نجهل أو يجهل علينا اللهم آمين all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we worship Him, we seek His tawfiq and we seek His assistance and we pray to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which is beneficial to us and give us the tawfiq to apply it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us that that will actually bring us closer to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala that will increase our taqwa, that will increase our iman. I pray to Allah azza wa jal to make this night the night of the fourth of the month of the Hijjah of the year 1438 since Hijrat in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that translates into August 26th of the Gregorian year 2017. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make it a blessed night to make all those who are with us in this masjid. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, live streaming today uh, but we pr I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make us all blessed in ourselves and in our health and in our wealth Allahumma Ameen and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those whom it will be said to go your reward will be that you have been forgiven Allahumma Ameen with that said uh, obviously we lost a little bit of time so I'm not gonna uh, waste any moment here but real quick obviously you all know that next Friday is the Eid Al-Adha may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a blessed and accepted uh, uh, milestone for us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our good deeds uh, and so and with such you know with saying so next Saturday will be off inshallah when we're not gonna have a halaqa next Saturday obviously we will resume the following Saturday bi idhnillahi ta'ala um, in very few moments you know just because we are in those in this season of khair in these 10 days of the hijjah uh, I know we don't have too much time, but I still wanted to remind ourselves because, yeah, Akhwan, this is like we always say. It's a season of khair, and it's, and it's an opportunity from Allah Azza wa Jal, who has given us uh, the opportunity to witness it. So we shouldn't actually let it go, and we shouldn't let it pass, it, pass us by, right? These are, this is a season of khair. This is, this is a set of 10 days that our righteous ancestors from uh, the Sahaba and the Tabi'een used to recognize and appreciate its importance, right? And do the best they can during this, these 10 days because it is an opportunity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They used to recognize three sets of 10 days. These 10 days, the first 10 days of Dil Hijjah, the last 10 days of Ramadan, and the first 10 days of the, uh, shah, the, or the sacred month of Al Muharram. So these are, these are three sets of 10 days. These 10 days, like I said, are uh, the best 10 days of the year. Allah Azza wa Jal made an oath by them. He said, وَالْفَجْرْ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرٍ yani Allah Azza wa Jal made an oath by these 10 days. He said, by the dawn and by the 10 nights. Uh, Imam Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said in his tafsir that this is the opinion of many, many of the Sahaba that these 10 nights are in reference to those 10 days of the, of the Hijjah. Right? And Allah Azza wa Jal, when Allah Azza wa Jal makes an oath, He doesn't subhanahu wa ta'ala make an oath by anything. But rather He makes an oath by that which is important. 
by that which is great. So if Allah Azza wa Jal is making an oath by these 10 days, then the, these 10 days must be something precious, right? You agree? Allah Azza wa Jal is making an oath. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرٍ And the wow is harf qasam. You know, by wallahi, right? When we, we make a, an oath, I say wallahi, right? Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرٍ And he's making an oath by these 10 days. It gives us an impression that these are pretty important 10 days. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us in multiple uh, authentic reports, hadith, that attest to that. And he referred to Allah Azza wa Jal sees these 10 days as the best 10 days and that the deeds, all the good deeds are in, in, in these 10 days are better in the sights of Allah Azza wa Jal than the deeds in any other days, right? So this actually is an encouragement for me and you and our wives and our kids to do the best we can during these 10 days. And notice that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not specify in these ahadith any specific good deed. He says, Al-Amal al-Salih, in its general, general, generality. Yani we say in the Arabic language, this is a general term. Any good deed, meaning not a specific good deed. And this is from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because imagine if Allah Azza wa Jal says, if you fast during these 10 days. Some people may not be able to fast. If he says, you have to make pilgrimage in these 10 days. Not everybody will be able to, right? If Allah Azza wa Jal said that you have to give charity, not everybody is capable of doing that, right? Some people may, some people may not. So it is from the grace and from the compassion of your Lord, Ibad Allah, that he actually left it wide open. He said, Al-Amal Salih, any Amal Salih, any righteous deed that you do during these 10 days. And the most important of that is what? Al-Fara'id that Allah Azza wa Jal made ordained upon us. So we shouldn't go too far. Some people, for example, they invest in sadaqah and they don't pray. This is wrong. Yani you have to keep your five daily prayers that Allah Azza wa Jal ordained upon you. You have to give zakat, the zakat al-wajiba, the mandatory zakat that you do before you actually give sadaqah, which is optional, right? So you start with the wajibat that Allah Azza wa Jal loves most. That's why he made them the pillars of Islam, right? That's why he selected these, Salat al-Khams, Siyam Ramadan, Hajj al-Bayt, uh, Siyam, uh, we said Siyam Ramadan, Zak Zakat al-Wajiba, right? These are so important, that's why Allah Azza wa Jal made them the five important pillars of Islam, right? And anything else comes next to them, second, second, second to them. So these are pretty important. So we say that this is actually, this is what we start with. Right? And then beyond that, then you may give zakat, uh, sadaqah, you may actually fast during these 10 days, the most, because also from the reports that Allah, Azza, that from the Rasulullah they attest that, uh, that, you know, he used to fast some of them, or most of them, or even all of them, as reported to us, right? So if you can fast, great, you know, the more you can fast, the, the better. But in particular, you know, fasting during the day of Arafah, which is the ninth of the Hijjah. And the ninth of the Hijjah this year is what? Next Thursday. So plan, put it on your calendar and mark it. If you cannot fast at any cost, then make sure that you fast on that day at least. Which is when, kid? Next Thursday. This coming Thursday, right? Make sure that Rasulullah said that fasting with this one day will, uh, will erase and is a uh, expiation of the sins of two years. You hear that? Two years fasting on one day is an expiation of the sins of two years. The previous one and the coming one. Allahu Akbar. What a great opportunity from Allah Azza wa Jal. Don't let it, let it pass by you. Now, what I wanted to come to is two things that most people make mistake about or may actually overlook, may not be aware of it. From Al-Amal Al-Salih, from Al-Amal Al-Salih that Rasulullah told us about is something very easy. Believe me, it doesn't take money, it doesn't take too much effort. It's wallahi, it couldn't be any easier. Is the in, uh, increase in remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. Increase of the tahleel, la ilaha illallah. At takbir, Allahu Akbar. At tahmeed, alhamdulillah. Can it get any easier? Wallahi, it cannot get it any easier. And there are two types of these remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, these good words. There is the unrestricted, and there is the restricted. There is the unrestricted 
and there is the restricted. The, un the restricted, let me start with the restricted, because this is what everybody knows about. The restricted takbir, which is after the five daily prayers, and that starts from the Fajr of the day of Arafah, which is the Fajr on Thursday, and it continues until the Asr of the 13th of the Hijjah, which is the fourth day of Eid. Easy? Easy enough? Type. From the Fajr, and then after every prayer. So after the Fajr on Arafah, on the 9th of the Hijjah, which is this coming Thursday. So after the Fajr, after the Asr, Dhuhr, after Asr, after Maghrib, and then it continues for the next five days until the 13th of the Hijjah, which is the fourth day of Eid. This is the restricted. Why is it called restricted? Because it is restricted after the prayer. Linked to the prayer, after the prayer. You finish the prayer, you make takbir. The shape or the, uh, the syntax of that takbir, you may say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Kabira. You may say as well, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd. That gather that actually combines all of them. At tahleel, wa takbir, wa tahmid. You remember that, kid? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You may also add a third one. So you may say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, or Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Easy? Alhamdulillah. This is the restricted, but there is what, this is what many people overlook. There is the unrestricted takbir which actually is not restricted to any time. You may say it any time of the day or night, and it starts from the beginning of the Hijjah. It starts from one, from the beginning of the Hijjah until the end of the day of the, fourth, of the 13th of the Hijjah. When is the beginning of the Hijjah? The Maghrib of the last day of the Qadah. Let me explain. This year, the first of, of the Hijjah was when? Wednesday. So Wednesday, this last Wednesday, was the Hijjah first. This unrestricted takbir starts from the Maghrib on Tuesday. From the Maghrib, from when the sun sets. From that time, you may start the unrestricted takbir. Any time during the day and night. Yeah. Connecting. And it continues until the sunset on the 13th of the Hijjah. Until the sunset, yani from even after you pray Asr and up until Maghrib. Until Maghrib on the 13th, then this is the end of it. So you have actually up to 14 days of unrestricted takbir. 14 days of unrestricted takbir. Easy? How much does that cost, Akhi? Very easy. How can we miss that? Whenever you remember from day and night, say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alhamd. By the way, for those who have not may or may have not noticed, but all of these words are from the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. You are glorifying your Lord. You are praising your Lord. You are uh, uh, attesting and witnessing to His oneness, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by saying, La ilaha illallah, right? And glorifying and, uh, uh, you know, making Allah Azza wa Jal bigger than anything else, right? That's, that's a very, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, attestation of this Tawheed to Allah Azza wa Jal. The second one, real quick inshallah, is actually slaughtering for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is from the great good deeds. Now I know that we're not witnessing Hajj, we're not, we didn't go for Hajj. That doesn't mean we are left behind. You can actually share in the rewards with those because the Hujjaj, they will slaughter, Uthiyah, right? We can do the same thing even if we didn't go for Hajj. And we slaughter uh, to share the same reward. And I say one udhiyah per household. One udhiyah per household, not per member of the family. 
right? And what attests to that is the many, many reports, the authentic reports from the Sahaba and what they used to, to do. It, to, it was crystal clear that they reported that they used to slaughter one Udhiyah per household, even if the wife is very wealthy. She may be even wealthier than her husband. And that's her own, her own money. She doesn't have to slaughter if the husband slaughters. One slaughter, one Udhiyah per household is enough and suffices for the whole household. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from me, from, from me and you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to do the good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiply the rewards. With that said, inshallah, we're, we'll start. Let's see, why is this not connecting now? We've already had a couple of technical difficulties today. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. May Allah ease. Let me do this. So obviously we've already covered those statements. We started two day, two weeks ago with talking about this chat or this topic of uh, the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, Kalamullah. For those who were with us the last two weeks, obviously already um, um, uh, or are aware that we actually already discussed those few statements. But very quickly, right, we discussed that the Quran is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we said that this, this is his speech in reality. Right? And we said that this linkage, that the Quran is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, attributing this speech to Allah Azza wa Jal is from the aspect that this is an attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. That speaking is an attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is not merely to honor the speech. Remember we had a discussion about, you know, the addition in the Arabic language when you say that this is, you know, uh, uh, you know, Muhammad's qalab or, or pen, right? When you say Muhammad's pen, when you add something to, some, to somebody when, and you attribute something to somebody, there are two cases. Whether it is something that can exist on its own and in that case is for honoring that. Like we say, Naqatullah, Baytullah. The Bayt, which is the masjid, can exist on its own. When you say Baytullah, it is to honor this house, which is the masjid, right? But when you add something that cannot exist on its own, like in this particular case, the kalam, speech. Have you ever seen speech walking down the street on its own? Doesn't make any sense. When you say speech, it means that there is something who spoke it. Yani speech doesn't exist out or in and out of itself. When you talk about speech, there has to be somebody who spoke it, right? It doesn't exist on its own, right? It has to have somebody, the speaker who spoke that speech. So when we say the speech of Allah, this is not to honor that speech by attributing it to Allah Azza wa Jal, but rather by saying that this is an attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is one of his attributes, like seeing, like hearing, like knowledge, like will, the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. Speech is an attribute of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal speaks as he wish, when he wishes, what he wishes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this statement, Imam Abu Jafar al-Tahawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, rahmatan wasi'ah, he is, at, he is actually confirming and affirming a great portion of our aqeedah, ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, that we believe that this Qur'an, which is in between our hands, is indeed the real speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? And this is, this, this is actually one of his attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we said that it actually then in the second statement he said minhu bada'a it originated from him we said that it means that Allah azza wa jal spoke it in reality it originated from Allah azza wa jal not from anybody else or from something else it not it did not originate from uh, Jibril alayhi salam it did not originate from Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam it did not originate from al lawh al mahfuz it indeed originated from Allah Azza wa Jal as something spoken. Remember, this is why we said Al-Kalam is something that is spoken, that can be heard, that is meaningful. 
So whenever we say about kalam, speech, it means that there is something that's spoken, that somebody that can be heard by somebody else, that has a meaning. And this is why we say that Allah Azza wa Jal, actually it originated, this Quran originated from Allah Azza wa Jal as something spoken. And in here, Imam Abu Ja'far is attesting to that. He said it originated from him as something spoken without us knowing how. We don't know how. And when we say that Allah Azza wa Jal spoke, we're not actually hinting in any way or shape or form how he spoke. We don't know that. But we say that he spoke subhanahu wa ta'ala and with a voice, with, with letters and meanings. And Jibreel alayhi salam heard it directly from Allah Azza wa Jal, from his Lord. So Jibreel heard it from his Lord. He didn't come to the Lawh al Mahfuz and read it from there. He heard it from Allah Azza wa Jal as something spoken. That's why it's kalam. If he read it from al lawh al mahfuz it wouldn't be kalam. Al kalam is something that is spoken that can be heard. So Jibreel heard it from Allah Azza wa Jal, and that is why we're, he's saying that it originated from Allah Azza wa Jal. So the origin of that speech is Allah Azza wa Jal as something spoken. We don't know how, but, it, but uh, Jibreel alayhi salam heard it from Allah Azza wa Jal, and then he descended with it as revelation. And he sent it down to his messenger as a revelation. So he revealed it to Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, who revealed it to the companions and the ummah and humanity after him alayhi salatu wasalam. And we say that al-wahi can be in multiple ways. It could be by angels, it could be by books, it could be by dreams. The dreams only to the messengers and the prophets. Now, don't not, not some, somebody doesn't come and say, oh, I see dreams now. We say this is when we say dream, this is only to the messengers and the prophets alayhi salatu wasalam. Nobody from now, from, from us, can see dreams and say this is a revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal. Only the messengers and the prophets can receive uh, uh, revelation. Or it could be as something that Allah Azza wa Jal makes it occur to them. Right? Ilham. Allah Azza wa Jal yulhim. Uh, the prophets and the messengers, he makes it occur to them what he wants to uh, convey to them. Alayhim salatu wassalam. So it started from Allah Azza wa Jal, and then he said, and the believers attest to it as being the truth upon that basis. Yani he is confirming that the believers indeed believe that this is the true speech in reality, the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal that was revealed to him. Alayhi salatu wassalam. And they believe that this is actually the haqq that was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now we also talked very briefly, or we talked actually, I'm sorry, now we're talking briefly, but we talked also that some people may question how come that in the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jal also attribute the speech to Jibreel Alayhi Wasallam and to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We say this is from the aspect of conveying it. Yani he's attributing that this is the speech of Jibreel because he revealed it to the Prophet Sallallahu He also, Allah Azza wa Jal, attributed this speech to the Prophet Sallallahu because he is the one who actually spoke it in front of people of the Mushriki Quraysh and conveyed it to them. But the speech is originally the speech of who? Of Allah Azza wa So from the aspect of speaking it originally, it is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. But from the aspect of conveying it, it could be the speech of Jibreel because he conveyed it to the Prophet. And it could be attributed as a speech of the Prophet because he is the one who actually spoke it to people. And Allah Azza wa Jal did not reveal it to people directly, does, does he? So there's no discrepancy in between them, right? This is how we reconcile between being attributed as Kalamullah and Allah Azza wa Jal said it, mentioned it in the Quran. He said, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغُهُ مَأْمَنَهُ يعني If one of the mushrikeen, right, ask for protection, ask you, O Prophet, صلى الله عليه وسلم, ask you for protection, then grant him this protection so that he may hear the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. So he attributed to, uh, to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, he attributed this speech to him subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it cannot be a speech of multiple people, of multiple, uh, of, many, uh, of many origins. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said in the next statement, and this is also what we talked about before, and they have certainty that it is the speech of Allah the Most High in reality. And notice that he is actually here uh, again um, re reaffirming that, he's saying bil haqiqah. In reality, it is so they, meaning the believers, 
this is a continuation of the previous uh, statement. He's saying that in reality, these uh, the believers they uh, have certainty that it is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is not a figure of speech because why he is saying this he is answering to those people who claim that saying it is kalamullah this is only a figure of speech yani we're attributing this speech to Allah azza wa jal as a figure of speech he meant to say that but it is not his speech imam abu jafar he's saying no 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 this is his speech in reality it's not a figure of speech it is not a figure of speech. Not, we're not just as a figure of speech attributing this to Allah Azza wa Jal. But it is his speech in reality that he spoke subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the believers have certainty about. Then he said, it is not created as the speech of mankind. And by the way, this is a very great statement because it actually uh, lays lays the ground or the, the, the proof that when we say this is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, right? We're saying that this is not something created. This is not something different than Allah or outside or something separate from Allah Azza wa Jal. And it is not created like the speech of the humans. And this is one of the differences between the speech of the humans and the speech of the Lord of the humans, of Al-Ibad and Rabb Al-Ibad. Our speech is created like us and our deeds. We are created and our speech is created and our deeds are created. But the speech of, of our Lord, Rabbuna subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not created. This is one of his attributes. And like all the attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal, they're not created like him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who say, but when you say that this is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, now you're making Allah Azza wa Jal resemble his creation. We're saying no, because this speech is not like that speech. There is, they don't resemble and it's not created. And it is not, it is not created. It is not something separate from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is actually also something that Imam Abu Jafar is answering to those who say that it is separate and it is created. We're saying, no, this is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not the speech of Jibreel to be created. It is not the speech of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam so that it is created, but rather it is the speech of Allah azza wa jal and it is one of his attributes. So, and we said the summary of this, what we need to actually remember of all of this is that this Quran is the speech of Allah azza wa jal, kalamullah, and that it originated from him. It is something that he subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke in reality. It is something that was revealed down to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as a revelation and it is not created. It is not created. Then he said in the 50th statement, and this is what we started last week, but we didn't finish. He said, فَمَنْ سَمِعَهُ فَزَعَمَ أَنَّهُ كَلَامُ الْبَشَرِ فَقَدْ كَفَرُ So whoever hears it, and hears, it is referring to what? To the Quran. Yani whoever is, he is saying, so whoever hears the Quran, the speech of Allah, and claims that it is the speech of a human, then he has committed unbelief. And here he is saying that indeed whoever hears the speech and claims or attributes the speech to the humans, attributed to Jibreel alayhi salam, attributed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, attributed to anybody else, then Imam Abu Jafar is saying that he committed, that he is denying that this is the speech of Allah azza wa jal, and as such he is committing disbelief. And this disbelief is from the type of the major disbelief, kufr al-akbar wa al billah, that takes the person outside of the pale of Islam, and we're gonna actually, Imam Abu Jafar himself is gonna prove why that is the case. So we have some more to, to, to talk about. Why it is major, major kufr, not minor kufr? Because we know there are two types, right? There is the major kufr and there is the minor kufr. Main difference of, between the two, the main difference is, and we talked about this before, right? When we talked about the tawheed. But just to refresh your memory real quick, the main difference, there are multiple differences, but the main difference between the two is the major kufr takes the person outside of the pale of Islam. He's not a Muslim anymore. Billah. We seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal. And minor kufr, it does not take the person, it's a major sin. Minor kufr is a major sin, but does not take the person outside of the, uh, of, the, of the pale of Islam. He or she is still a Muslim, but they're committing a major sin. While the major kufr is something very, very serious. 
It takes the person outside of the figure of Islam. He's saying anybody who hears this Quran and attribute it to a human, he's saying this is not the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, then he or she, that person committed a major kufr. And like I said, we're going to say why. So if somebody says that this is the speech of Jibreel or this is the speech of, for example, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then he committed a major kufr. And Allah Azza wa Jal has actually promised or warned that person and threatened, threatened that person when in the next statement he said, So Allah has blamed and criticized such a person and has threatened him with hellfire by saying, Sa'uslihi saqar which is the ayah of Surah Al-Muddathir, which means I will cast him into hellfire. Allah Azza wa Jal is threatening that person who says that this is the speech of the humans. He's threatening that person to throw him, to cast him into hellfire. Billah. And this is, brothers and sisters, exactly what the Mushriki Quraysh said. What Mushriki Quraysh said, that this is actually in the speech of the Prophet and somebody is actually teaching him. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned this in the ayah of Surah Al-Nahl. He said, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ إِنَّمَا يُعَلِّمُهُ بَشَرٌ لِسَانُ الَّذِي يُلْحِدُونَ إِلَيْهِ أَعْجَمِيٌّ وَهَذَا لِسَانٌ عَرَبِيٌّ مُبِينٌ And indeed we know, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying that he knows. He says, we know that they say it is only a human being who teaches him, yani the Prophet. They claim that it is only a human who teaches the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This speech that he's claiming, is the Quran is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's what Mushriki Quraysh claim. Allah Azza wa Jal is actually saying the tongue of the man, that person who they claimed is teaching the Prophet doesn't even speak Arabic. <laughs> he speaks other than the language, he doesn't speak Arabic. The tongue of the man they refer to is foreign, while this is, yani this, the, this Quran, the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, is a clear Arabic tongue. And that person doesn't even speak Arabic. But the point is that they actually claim that this Quran is not the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. They claim that this is the speech of a human, right? And Allah Azza wa Jal countered that. And they said this is what they actually, uh, they claim. And we know from the many ayat in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal said that they actually claim that this is actually from the divination. Kahana, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a kahan. He's a... Is bringing divination or this is a poetry right piece of poetry or this is the speech of the humans or this is only asatir al-awwali this is the legends of the of the previous generation or the formal people and this is where he's just repeating it but Allah Azza wa Jal countered that and he said indeed this is actually the speech of this is my speech this is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal and they only claimed all of that to do what to push people away from this Quran so that they don't listen to it, so that they don't get guided by it, right? To push people away from the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. And last week, briefly, we, we, uh, uh, I told you about that story of those three people from Quraysh, remember? Those three people who said, who agreed, we're not going to listen to the Quran. They denied that this is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, right? And they said, don't come to the Prophet and listen to the recitation, rec recitation of the Quran. But one of them couldn't actually, uh, couldn't, couldn't uh, resist the temptation. So he, come, he came uh, secretly during the night to actually secretly listen to the, recit to, to the, rec to, uh, listen to the recitation of the Prophet ﷺ. On his way back, he met the other two people. He said, wait a minute, didn't we agree that we're not going to listen to it? He said, okay, we're not going to come again. Next day, he came again secretly to listen to it. He just could, he cannot, he cannot help it. This is something that has beauty in it. And we're going to have to say some more about this, subhanAllah. The second day he came, and then on his way back, he also met the other two people. And they said, we're not going to come again. The third day, he actually did exactly the same thing. And they came and uh, listened to, to Rasulullah reciting the Quran. And they said, that's it. We, they made an agreement, we will never come back because we're going to keep coming back. If we listen to it again, we're going to feel the beauty and we may actually fall for it, supposedly fall for it. And, you know, they, they, they're denying it, they're denying the Qur'an. So they said, we're not going to come to it. And Allah Azza wa Jal actually recorded that, what they said. And he said, um, in the ayah of Surah Fussilat, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ Don't listen to it. لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ 
فَلَنُوذِقَنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا uh, And those who disbelieve say, listen not to this Qur'an and make noise, noise in the midst of its re recitation so that they may overcome, you may overcome. But surely we shall cause those who disbelieve to taste a severe torment and certainly we shall requite them the worst of what they used to do. So Allah Azza wa Jal is threatening them that he will actually punish them because they said that this is the speech of, of the human. In the next statement he said, and so Allah blamed and criticized such a person and has threatened him with hellfire by saying, the meaning of which I will cast him into hellfire. Allah Azza wa Jal is threatening such a severe torment, such a severe punishment to throw that person into hellfire. Why? For what? For doing what? He's saying in the next statement, which is the, 50, the 50 second statement, he said, فَلَمَّا أَوْعَدَ اللَّهُ بِسَقَرْ لِمَنْ قَالَ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا قَوْلُ الْبَشَرْ Surah Al-Muddathir, عَلِمْنَا وَأَيْقَنَّا أَنَّهُ قَوْلُ خَالِقِ الْبَشَرْ So since Allah has threatened, Imam Abu Ja'far is saying, since Allah has threatened with hellfire those who say, this is nothing but the word of a human being, then we know and we have full certainty that it is the speech of the creator of mankind. It is not the speech of mankind, but the speech of the creator of mankind. What is the occasion of the revelation of these few ayat of Surah Al-Muddathir, brothers and sisters? To be able to understand the meaning, you have to understand why it was revealed, why they were revealed, a couple of ayat. What is the occasion of the revelation? Why were they revealed? For who they were revealed? Who are they talking about? Because if you listen to those ayat, you see that they're talking about a specific person in particular. And indeed, they were revealed talking about a particular person from Mushriki Quraysh. And the, uh, uh, yani the most uh, authentic opinion is that they were revealed talking about Al-Walid ibn al-Mughira al-Makhzumi, one of the great chiefs of Quraysh, people of, of Mecca. He was actually one of their chiefs, actually one of the, their most prominent chiefs, to the fact that they re used to recognize him, and they used, he is the flower of Quraysh. He is the flower of Quraysh. Yani he is the best of them, he is the greatest one of them, and he is the greatest chief of, of Quraysh. And he was a very literate person. He had a, very, a vast knowledge of the Arabic language, he had a vast knowledge of poetry, he has the vast knowledge of literature of the Arabs, he had vast knowledge in, he was a very literate person. And he knew what the poetry looks like, what the speech of the humans look like, and how it actually, it sounds, right? So this particular person, he was from the, يعني, like I said, the chiefs of Quraysh and one of the greatest disbelievers from the greatest mushriki of Quraysh and one of the great people of Quraysh. He was actually, he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? To actually um, uh, يعني, talk to him Alaihi Salatu Wasallam and to come in a, to an agreement, and to come to an agreement. He said, if Ya, Rasul, uh, ya Muhammad, Obviously, he doesn't recognize him as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Ya Muhammad, if what you're looking for is kingdom and, you know, to own and ownership, we'll give you kingdom, we'll give you mulk, you know, we'll, give, we'll actually give you whatever you want. If what you want is money, we'll give you as much as you want. We'll give you tons of it. If you, what you're looking after is women, we'll get you the most beautiful of the women and, and, and let you marry them. Now, obviously, he's talking in worldly matters. He's thinking that this is what he's looking after, right? You know, prestige and, you know, life and all of that, right? He said, are you done? Is this what you want? Is this what you came to, t to say? He said, yes. He said, then listen. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started reciting the first several ayat of Surah Fussilat unto him. And he started by saying, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Hamim, Tanzil min ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Kitab fussilat ayatuhu, Quran arabiya li qawm yalamun, Bashira wa nadira, Fa'arada akthruhum fahum la yasmaun." A revelation from Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. A book, يعني this Quran, a book whereof the verses are explained in detail. A Quran in Arabic for people who know. They understood Arabic. They were excellent and skilled in the Arabic language. And this very Quran was revealed in the Arabic language. 
a Quran in Arabic for people who know, giving glad tidings for those who submit to it, and warning for those who deny it and reject it. And, but, and, but most of them turn away so they listen not. He's attesting to exactly what they're doing. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept on reciting until he reached the ayah of Allah azza wa or the, what Allah azza wa jal said, فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا But if they turn away, if they turn their back, فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا فَقُلْ أَنذَرْتُكُمْ صَاعِقَةً وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ فَقُلْ أَنذَرْتُكُمْ صَاعِقَةً مِثْلَ صَاعِقَةِ عَادٍ وثمود. But if they turn away, then say, يعني يا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم, Say, I have warned you of a sa'iqa, a destructive torment. Like the sa'iqa which overtook Ad and Thamud, the people of Ad and Thamud that Allah Azza wa Jal told us about their stories and destroyed them completely. Destroyed them, took them away completely. So he's warning them, he's warning them that Allah Azza wa Jal is capable of sending such a destructive torment that will take you completely away. That will, that will actually destroy, destroy you all together. At that point, Al-Walid, he said, stop right there, hasbuk, hasbuk. And then he went back to his people, to Quraysh, to Mushriki Quraysh. When he came back to Mushriki Quraysh, the people who were waiting for him, he said, he is coming with a different face. He is coming back with a different face, different than the one that he, went, that he left with. So they knew something has happened. And this is somebody, like I said, I st remember what I started by saying? He was a very literate person. He knew. He knew what poetry looks like. He knew what the speech of a human looks like and what it sounds like. And he, he, was, he, he, uh, he liked what he heard. And he was taken by it. And he knew that this is no speech of the humans. It doesn't look like the speech of the humans. So he went back and they said, what happened? Right? Tell, tell us, what, how did it go? Right? With, the, with Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. He said, I heard a speech unlike the poetry, unlike the speech that we are aware of, that we know of, that, that we heard, that we learned, that we read, that we heard. This is unlike all of that. It has beauty that will take, that will actually uh, touch your soul, right? It is a speech that will actually yani, affect you and that will actually leave a, uh, will, uh, will make you emotional and will touch your, will, will touch your soul. And um, it, it is actually so, a very beneficial speech. So they, they felt that he was actually, he fell for the Qur'an. So they threatened him and they said, and they dispraised him and they said, you are one of our chiefs, how can you do that? You know, and they threatened him. And yeah, listen to this, and this is something that is a great reality that we should take admonition from. He went back and he reverted back to what he said before. He realized this is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. It cannot be the speech of the humans. But when he felt he's going to lose all the luxury that he's enjoying, when he's going to lose all the prominent role and the prominent position in his people, he didn't want to give that up. And he said, yes, it is the speech of the humans. And Allah Azza wa Jal told us about this, where Allah Azza wa Jal says in the few ayat of Surah, uh, of surah Al-Muddathir, he said, He's talking about Al-Walid ibn Al-Mughira, Al-Makhzumi. And since he died on shirk, we say, Alayhi la'natullah, wal'iyadhu billah. He said, Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, Innahu fakkara wa qaddar, Al-Walid. Verily, he thought and plotted. This is a particular. So these ayat were revealed for a particular person. In particular. Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, Verily, he thought and plotted. فَقُتِلَ كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ So let him be cursed how he plotted. ثُمَّ uh, قُتِلَ كَيْفَ قَدَّرْ And once more, let him be cursed how he plotted. ثُمَّ نَظَرْ Then he thought, he thought to himself, if I submit to this Qur'an, then I'm going to lose everything. Right? I'm going to lose the position, I'm going to lose the social position, I'm going to lose all of that. So he thought to himself. Then he thought. ثُمَّ نَظَرْ ثُمَّ عَبَسَ وَبَسَرْ Then he frowned and then he looked in a bad temper, tempered way. ثُمَّ أَدْبَرَ وَاسْتَكْبَرْ Then he turned back and he was proud. You know, istikbar, he wouldn't submit to the, to the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. فَقَالَ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا 
Sihrun yu'thar. Then he said, this is nothing but a magic from that of old. In huwa illa, in hadha illa qawlul bashar. This is the statement, this is the ayah that the Imam Abu Jafar was referring to. Remember in the previous, previous statement, 51? In this statement, notice what he's saying. Allah Azza wa Jal is saying that I will act, I'm sorry, not the statement, the following statement, sorry, in here. This is the one he is referring to. In hadha illa qawlul bashar. Who said that? Al Walid ibn al Mughira. In hadha illa qawlul bashar. It is but the speech of the, of the human. Then Allah Azza wa Jal threatened him for saying that. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, Sa'uslihi saqar. I will cast him into hellfire. For what? For what reason? Because he said, this is not but the speech of the humans. Allah Azza wa Jal threatened him to, uh, threatened to cast him into hellfire eternally. This shows us how serious and how grave that statement that he said, that this is but not but the speech of the humans. And that is why Allah Azza wa Jal threatened to cast him into hellfire eternally. This is what tells us that this is from the type of the major disbelief that takes the person outside of the, of the pale of Islam. Because we know that only the disbelievers will be, will be threatened or will be thrown eternally into hellfire. Any believer, even if Allah Azza wa Jal punishes, punishes him into hellfire for a certain period of time, he will eventually be uh, taken out of hellfire and be admitted into paradise. But since he will be cast eternally into hellfire, then we know that this is a person who committed disbelief. And like Imam Abu Jafar in the previous statement, he said, فَقَدْ كَفَرْ يعني الكفر الأكبر from the major kufr that leaves the person into, into uh, they, takes the person outside of the pale of Islam. What I wanted to is a side note, brothers and sisters, because we shouldn't leave this without actually commenting on this. If anything, brothers and sisters, this should actually remind us that it is only by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal and by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal and by the fadl and the favor of Allah Azza wa Jal that we see the guidance as guidance. Look at this person. This person came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he heard this Quran, this great ayat from the honorable tongue of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was touched by them. He came back with a dif different face. He knew from the bottom of his heart. He knew. It's not that he, did, he was illiterate. He didn't know. He knew from the bottom of his heart that this is the speech of this is the speech of the Creator. And he knew that it does not resemble the speech of the humans. And this is what he came back with. But when he felt that he's going to lose all the bounties of this of this worldly man of this worldly of or of this dunya, right? Then he turned back, and then he turned back to disbelief for and he uh, and then he and then he claimed that this is the speech of Allah, uh, this is the speech of the humans. So, ya Akhwan, we have to keep asking Allah Azza wa Jal. We have to keep praying to Allah Azza wa Jal to keep us on the straight path, to keep us guided. And we keep repeating that because it is only by the favor of Allah Azza wa Jal that He's fixing our heart on the straight path. That He's fixing our heart on being able to see Al Haq as Haq and Al Batal as Batal, falsehood as falsehood. It is not by our smartness. This is an intelligent person. Al Walid ibn al Mughira al Makhzumi was an intelligent, literate person. And he knew that this does not sound like the speech of the humans. This is different. But he disbelieved eventually. Why? Out of istikbar. He didn't want to submit. He didn't want to lose the worldly matters. He didn't want to lose the favor of this dunya. So let us keep praising Allah Azza wa Jal and keep asking Him for His backing, for His tawfiq, for His tathbeet, for His to, to keep receiving steadfastness from Allah Azza wa Jal to stick and to stay on this straight path. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala keep us steadfast on this straight path, mustaqimin on this straight path. Allahumma ameen. So, we say, we, so this shows us, brothers and sisters, that they, from the inside of their heart, from the inside of their soul, they drink, recognize that this is the speech of the Rabb al-Bashar. This is not the speech of al-Bashar. 
but this is the speech of Rabb al-Bashar, of the Lord of, of the humans. But they actually uh, rejected it out for, you know, for various reasons, mostly because of this worldly, uh, of, of the benefits in this worldly matter. But they recognized this from, from, their, from their inside, and Allah Azza wa Jal actually attested to that, and, they, and He said, وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوَّةً And they belied them, يعني these verses, these ayat, wrongfully and arrogantly, though their own, sem or, or, own selves were convinced thereof. They, knew from, they know from the inside that these are the true ayat. These, uh, this is al-haq from Allah Azza wa Jal. But they rejected, like al-Mughira, like al-Walid ibn al-Mughira, al-Makhzumi, and like those three people who came and, and listened to the recitation. But eventually they said, don't listen to it, because you're going to fall for it. So don't, don't even listen to it. Right? And keep making noise so that you don't hear it. All of these, they actually have the argument on themselves. Yani they don't have an argument on the Day of Judgment. Because they realize that this is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. But they arrogantly belied it and arrogantly rejected it and denied it. So any person who says that this is the speech of the humans, not the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yani in, in other words, anybody who says that this is the speech of Jibreel alayhi salam, or this is the speech of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, or the speech of any other human or any other creature other than Allah azza wa jal, then faqad kafar, as Imam Abu Ja'far rahimahullahu ta'ala says, and as Allah azza wa jal subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. So it is the speech of Allah azza wa jal. Then in the next statement, which is the 53rd statement, and how much more time do we have? 10 more minutes, Aisha is what, 9.30? Still 9.30? Okay, so we have another 10 minutes, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, then he said, وَلَا يُشْبِهُ قَوْلَ الْبَشَرِ And it does not resemble the speech of the humans. This is, by the way, a great statement from an Imam Abu Ja'far, rahimahullah ta'ala. As a matter of fact, this is one of the greatest statements in this uh, yani topic of the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in here he is actually uh, affirming and confirming a great aspect that we believe with respect to the speech of Allah azza wa jal. That although we say this is the speech of Allah azza wa jal, but it does not resemble the speech of the humans. So if we say that Allah azza wa jal subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and that he has a speech and the Quran is one of the uh, one of the instances or part of the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now we know that the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is more vast than just the Quran. Yani Allah Azza wa Jal has bigger speech and more speech than just what is contained in the Quran. And the Quran is part of the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. All right. We say that although we say that Allah Azza wa Jal speaks and that Allah Azza wa Jal has speech, right? We're not making Allah Azza wa Jal resemble the humans. Why? Because his speech is not like the speech of the humans. And the speech of the humans, no matter how great it is, will never, ever resemble the speech of the Lord of the humans or the creator of the humans. There is no resemblance whatsoever. The speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is such a great speech, such a great guidance to humanity, right? And to the creation. And the speech of the humans does not resemble, doesn't even come close, no matter how great it is, no matter how good it is, it doesn't even come close to the speech of the, of the Lord of the Creator of, or the Lord of the humanity, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can it even resemble the, the speech of, of the humans? We know, we say that the humans, the creation, have attributes, have characteristics, and all of these are created. And Allah Azza wa Jal, the Lord, has also attributes and characteristics, and they, are, they do not resemble. The seeing does not resemble the seeing. The hearing does not resemble the hearing. Likewise, the speech does not resemble the speech. And the will does not resemble the will. The power does not resemble the power, etc. So the speech does not resemble the speech, although it is the same term. I have a speech, you have a speech, and Allah Azza wa Jal have speech, part of which is the Quran. But the fact that we're using the same term does not make it re does not make them resemble one another, and we say that the speech of the humans does not resemble the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal. Otherwise, 
Allah Azza wa Jal would not dispraise and would not threaten Walid ibn al-Mughira and those like him who say that this is the speech of the humans, he wouldn't threaten them, he wouldn't dispraise them, he wouldn't threaten them by casting them into hellfire eternally for saying that this is not but the speech of the humans, right? It means that this is such a grave and erroneous statement and it is not the speech of, of the humans. Now, what I wanted to, and subhanAllah, you know, because of we actually lost some time at the beginning, but what I wanted actually to talk about something that is, this is actually an occasion to talk about something that is related. Ah, oh, subhanAllah. What's wrong with this Wi-Fi? We need to figure something out here. We can't keep doing this. Yeah, you know, technology should be better than that. You know, we should be able to do better than this. Anyway, because subhanAllah, it is distracting. Inshallah, we'll have to figure this out offline, inshallah ta'ala. But what I wanted to say is, speaking of that the speech of the humans does not resemble the speech of, and does not resemble the speech of the humans. The speech of Allah Azza wa Jal does not resemble the speech of the humans. Like I said, this is a great statement. And it is actually a great proof, an argument, for those who deny that Allah Azza wa Jal speaks, that who deny that Allah Azza wa Jal has a speech, out of fear that by by making that or saying that, then we making we are making Allah Azza wa Jal resemble the humans. This is a great statement to refute that, because to begin with, the speech does not resemble the speech. So there's no problem. There's nothing to be afraid of. If you run away from this resemblance, you're wrong. You're denying something in a wrong way because there is no resemblance to begin with. Not only that, this is also an occasion to talk about how great the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is. And this is, brothers and sisters, actually one of the, like I said, it is an occasion to, to talk about this. And you'll literally, literally never find this discussion in the books of Aqidah. If you open any book of Aqidah, you'll rarely, if any at all, see included in that along with it a discussion of this greatness of the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal which we call miraculous how many of you have heard of the term I'jaz al-Quran or that al-Quran is mu'jiz that this Quran is miraculous or the miracle of the Quran how many of you have heard of this term okay I'jaz al-Quran is a very important topic which is to say that the speech, which is the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, is in and of itself is miraculous. It has, it has a miraculous characteristics to it, right? And this is actually a great occasion to talk about that because we're saying that it does not resemble the speech of the humans. The speech of the humans, no matter, like I said, how great it is, it has a certain limitation. Right? There is always something that is a pitfall in it. There is always something that is missing from it. There is always, يعني, no matter how perfect it may be from several aspects, you'll always find a, an aspect of it that is missing or maybe imperfect or incomplete. On the other hand, you will see that the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal is always perfect, is always great, is always complete from all aspects, from all angles, from all perspectives and from all aspects. And this is one of the main distinction and main differences between the speech of the humans and the speech of the Lord of the humans. Rabb al-ibad, Rabb al-bashariya. And for some, for some of you who have been attending uh, regularly, right, not occasionally, but regularly, you may, have, you may remember that we actually touched upon this when we were talking about the discussion of how to what are the signs that a prophet is a true prophet? Remember when we're talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and our belief in him. Some of the discussion we talked about, okay, now how do we know that a, prof, a prophet is a true prophet? Remember, we had a discussion. And we said there are actually signs to that. Not any person who comes now and say, I am a prophet and I am a messenger and it gets revealed to me, we just follow him, right? There are signs, Allah Azza wa Jal put signs and put marks that will tell us that this is a true prophet and this is a false prophet. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you remember, Allah Azza wa Jal, and like every other prophet and messenger before him, not only him, all the messengers and the prophets before him alayhi salatu wasalam, and the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, 
each and every one of them, Allah Azza wa Jal provided and supported by proofs and evidences so that people know that he, they were a true prophet or they were true prophets alayhim salatu wa salam. And I, Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam was supported with many of them. Remember, we talked about all of them. We said the greatest of which is what? Quran. The greatest miracle and the greatest sign that attest to the truthfulness of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a prophet and messenger that will tell us that he is a true prophet and a true messenger of Allah azza wa jal is this very Quran that he was revealed that he that was revealed to him that he conveyed to us right because what it is a miraculous sign the Quran was miraculous and it is a miracle to the entirety of the ins and the jinn and this is actually what makes it a, a sign, a sign from Allah Azza wa Because some people may say, but wait a minute, brother, some people, the magicians, may actually deceive you and may come with miracles. We say these miracles are only miraculous to certain people, not to all humans. We, for example, the believers, we know that they are big liars. Well, we don't fall for this. So what they do is not miracle to us. It is not. We know what, how they do this. And we know the wrong ways that they actually follow to do that. So their tricks are not miraculous to us. And as such, there are not true signs. Yani a magician cannot come and say, well, wait a minute, I come with miracles, I can do miracles, you know? I can actually deceive your sight, and thus I am a true messenger. We say, no, 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 you, do you, your magic is not miraculous to all of us. But the miracles of the Quran is miraculous, and it is a miracle to the entirety of the Thaqalain. Both words, al-ins and al-jinn. Remember, so we talked about that there, but also it is, a relate, it is related to our topic in here, to the speech of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that it is different than the speech of the humans. The speech of the Allah Azza wa Jal is different than the speech of the humans. Why? Because it is miraculous. Mu'jiz, al-Quran is kalamullah, and this Quran is mu'jiz. Yani this Quran has i'jaz. And as a, as a result, there is a topic called Ijaz al-Qur'an. Now, like I said, several people, some of them were correct in their discussion, some of them were incorrect in their discussion, but there were books separate on that topic. You don't find this in the discussion of Al-Aqidah. And that is why I wanted to actually touch upon that and discuss how Al-Qur'an is miraculous, right? What makes Al-Qur'an as miraculous? and why it is different than the speech, in what ways it is different than the speech of the humans. Um, I think we're running out of time. You know, I think I have only three minutes, which obviously is not nearly enough time to start this discussion either, let alone actually finishing it. If I got your attention and if I get your appetite enough, inshallah, I hope I did, then please come back not next Saturday, because next Saturday is the second day of Eid. So we're off next Saturday, ta'ala. We're going to resume the following Saturday, right? Which, is, which would be what? The 9th of uh, oh, uh, September. September 9th. So September 9th, inshallah, the following Saturday, we will resume. So if you're interested, please come and uh, join us again. We're going to be talking about how the Quran is mu'jiz. How the Quran is miraculous. And what it means when we say that the Qur'an is miraculous, what, what do we mean by that? And in what ways and in what characteristics, what are the characteristics of the Qur'an that makes this Qur'an miraculous and mu'jiz, right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make us among those who comprehend and those who listen and obey. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to keep seeing that which is haq as haq, like Allah Azza wa Jal supports the believers and make us see that which is falsehood as falsehood. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast on the straight path so that we don't deviate from it or fall back when iyadu billah, like some people did, as we have seen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who have the right to believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and follow that by the good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. سبحان ربك رب رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله